Today we can discuss the basic structure of immunoglobulins. Antibodies. Antibodies are the antigen binding protein present in the B cell membrane or sec uh, secreted by the plasma cell. So the BCR present in the uh, membrane of B cell as well as the secreted uh, what uh, the antibody secreted with plasma cells both are termed as antibodies or immunoglobulins. So the membrane bound antibody confers antigen specificity to B cells. So the, as the membrane bound antibody binds to the antigen, then only the B cell proliferation occur and it results in the formation of plasma cells which secrete the secretory antibodies. So the membrane bound antibody confers the antigenic specificity to the B cell and antigen specific proliferation of B cell clones uh, results in the, um, uh, 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 is elicited by the interaction of this BCR with the antigen. So the secreted antibody circulate in the blood. So as a result of the interaction with the B cell as well as the um, antigen results in the proliferation of B cells, um, B cell clones are produced and these B cell clones will produce uh, the antibody which circulate in the blood. The main function of antibody is that it serves as a effector of uh, humoral immunity, it serves as a effect of immune immunity by this uh, antibody search out uh, the antigen throughout the blood and as it finds the antigen it neutralizes the antigen or uh, uh, they may tag the antigen mainly they may bind to the antigen so that uh, either complement proteins or um, NK cells or mast cells or macrophages can come uh, and uh, kill them. Uh, so uh, they either neutralize the antigen or they will mark the antigen or they will mark the antigen or tag the antigen or uh, agglutinize it so that it become bigger uh, um, entity so that the macrophage can easily uh, phagocytos. Like that um, it, they will mark or tag the anti antigen so that it is easy for elimination. All antibodies share structural features and bind to antigen um, and participate in limited number of effective functions. So and all antibodies share the structural features and bind to antigen and uh, after binding to antigen it involved in the neutralization or either elimination of the antigen. In this uh, um, uh, video we are discussing only on the basic structure of antibodies. Uh, more advanced videos are coming uh, in next day. So, we can see the basic structure of antibodies now. The blood, when we take the blood and separate in, it in a centrifuge, usually a serological centrifuge, when we separate it, we will get a fluid part at the uppermost portion and a cellular part at the lowermost portion. The fluid part of the blood is known as the plasma, while the cellular part contains the red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. So the plasma, if we, when we take the plasma, the plasma contain small molecules, macromolecules such as fibrin which is or other proteins required for the formation of blood clot etc. So if the plasma we allow it to uh, solidify, uh, allow it to clot, then, then also some fluid uh, phase will be left. That fluid phase is known as a serum. The antibody is found to be reside in the serum. So uh, when we take a blood, it uh, we centrifuge it, it will be divided into plasma and the cells and if we clot the plasma, then the remaining uh, fluid part will be containing the antibodies. The antibodies are heterodimers. The coming to the structure, antibodies are heterodimers. Heterodimers means uh, it consists of uh, uh, um, uh, dissimilar or it is not consist of homodimer means uh, consist of uh, uh, similar uh, subunits of uh, similar polypeptides made up of similar polypeptides. Heterodimer means it is uh, made up of uh, dissimilar polypeptides that is why it is called heterodimers. An antibody molecule have a common structure of four polypeptide chains. Antibody molecule usually consists of four polypeptide chains. We can see the basic structure of antibody here. So I will go through that. I hope we can see it. it consists of four polypeptide chain. One polypeptide chain is here, one polypeptide chain is here, one is here and one is here. It consists of four polypeptide chains. The structure consists of two identical light chains uh, and the polypeptide is about uh, uh, 25,000 uh, Dalton in molecular weight. We can see 
to identical light chains of 25,000 Dalton of size and two identical heavy chains a larger polypeptide of uh, size more than uh, 50,000 uh, Dalton we can see two heavy chains also here we can see heavy chains these are the two heavy chains as well as two light chains as forms the uh, immunoglobulins or antibodies like antibody molecule con uh, they constitute H and L chain are also uh, are also called immunoglobulins so um, uh, these H and L chains together forms the immunoglobulins each light chain is bound to a heavy chain by disulfide bond and by such non covalent interaction uh, as salt linkages hydrogen bonds hydrophobic bonds uh, to form the heterodimer so these much of interactions are there between the heavy and light chain we can see in the heavy and light chain we go there are we can see disulfide bond as well as salt bridges are there hydrophobic interactions are there hydrogen bonds are there all this make stabilize the uh, dimerization of uh, this uh, light and heavy chains it's the same in the case here also so the light and heavy chains are linked together by uh, these type of linkages we can see the linkages are uh, uh, salt linkages uh, hydrogen bonds are there hydrophobic bonds are there all forms the uh, he heavy light chain at a dimer So coming to similar non-covalent interaction and disulfide bridges linked to identical light at uh, heavy chain combinations to each other in the form of a, uh, um, a four uh, chain HL2 antibody structure, a dimer of dimer. So uh, the heavy chain and light chain are linked together by these linkages and we can see uh, the, uh, we can see the uh, we can see the uh, this dimer this is a, a heavy chain light chain dimer heavy chain light chain dimer this dimer is again linked by disulfide bond as well as ionic interactions uh, sorry non ionic interactions uh, which stabilizes or which um, uh, links these dimers so this antibody molecule can be called as a dimer of dimer and the body molecule can be called as a dimer of dimer. As we shall see, the exact number and precise position of this in interchain disulfide bond differ uh, among the antibody classes and subclasses. In coming, uh, coming videos, we will study uh, about the antibody classes and subclasses. In antibody classes and subclasses, the uh, number of, uh, as well as the position number of the disulfide bond varies among the different classes of antibodies. Coming to the next point, there is a first one ton or so amino acids of the amino terminal region of the light or and he or heavy chain varies greatly among the antibodies of different specificity we can see in the one ton amino acids here um, i'll just show you uh we i will take the pen so here at the amino terminal region we can see a one ton amino acids at this region of the light as well as or light or heavy chain varies greatly among the antibodies of different specificity so mainly when we consider of an antibody of a single class the main variation among the antibody is seen in this one ton amino acids uh, present in the amino terminal region because these are the regions where antigen bind to the antibody so among a same class of antibody all constant region uh, will be somewhat similar but the variation can be seen only in this one ton amino acid in the amino terminal uh, amino terminal region of the amino terminal region of the heavy and light chain this region with high variation is known as the variable region this is responsible for um, uh, producing different types of or different uh, combinations of uh, antigenic specificity 
So these segments are highly variable sequence called V region or variable region. Variable region can be found in the light chain as well as in the heavy chain. All the difference in the specificity is displayed um, by different antibodies can be traced in the difference in the amino acid sequence of the variable uh, region. So if we say one antibody differ from other, it, uh, the main thing you need to understand is that its variable region differ, not the constant regions which we can, we can see the other region, uh, the rest of the region other than the variable region are called constant region. If we say uh, these are two types of antibody, uh, we, we can say um, uh, the difference in that both antibodies lies in this variable region and the constant region is somewhat similar uh, uh, between uh, both that antibody. In fact, most of the difference in the um, uh, antibody fall in the areas of variable region as we said earlier. Variable region, the most of the difference among the antibody will be at the variable region. And these areas of variable region where the uh, differences we can see is called uh, complementarity determining region or CDRs. CDRs um, in these CDRs on both CDRs are present in both light and heavy chain that constitute the antigen binding site within an antibody molecule. By contrast, within the same antibody class, far fewer difference has been seen with the one compares to the sequence throughout the rest of the molecule. The regions of relatively constant sequence beyond the variable region are dubbed as C region, that is we have already said CL uh, uh, light chain and CH4 heavy chain. Rest of the what, uh, rest of what is present in the antibody uh, other than the variable region are called constant region or C region which mainly consists of CL region as well as the CH region. Another important thing is that antibodies are glycoproteins. You, you all know that the antibodies contain carbohydrate chains linked to it. So carbohydrate chains or carbohydrates are attached to the constant region of the antibodies. What is the role of this carbohydrate in the uh, or, or the role of the glycosylation in the antibody? It's uh, less known about the, not completely understand about the glycosylation of uh, antibody. But uh, uh, when, com uh, when saying about the glycosylation of the antibody, we can say it increases the solubility of the antibody molecules. Inappropriate glycosylation or absence of glycosylation aff affect the rate of antibodies which is cleared from the serum. So, if the antibodies mm, uh, inappropriate glycosylation or absence of glycosylation in antibody which results in the uh, affects the rate of antibody cleared from serum and it decreases the efficiency of interaction between antibody and the complement system. If uh, the antibody is not uh, properly um, glycosylated, the antibody, uh, uh, it affects the interaction between antibody and complement proteins. It also affects the interaction between antibodies and FC receptors. FC receptors are present in mast cells, NK cells, effector cells. So it also affects the interactions between antibodies and FC receptors. So it will affect the effective function, effective role of the antibody for sure. This is all about the antibodies uh, basic structure and features of antibody. Hope you understand the video, hope you, hope you are um, uh, interested in the video. If you are interested, please subscribe to the video and uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, like the video. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you.